Hey guys, Ivan here at IvanMena.com. And in this video, I wanna show you how to set up Google Ads conversion tracking in 2022 for your website, your funnel, your landing page, whatever it is you're using, I will show you how to set up tracking between that and Google Ads. And setting up conversion tracking is extremely important, guys. It will not only show you the conversions inside the actual Google Ads interface, for every aspect, for example, at the campaign level, at the keyword level, you'll be able to see conversions here as well. So it will really help you dissect the data and figure out what works and what doesn't. But the other cool thing about this is that you will be able to feed this conversion data into Google Ads, and then Google will be able to find more customers just like the ones that have already converted. So really, really cool stuff. I definitely suggest that you set this up as soon as possible. So before we get straight into it, guys, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, hit the notification bell icon so you get notified when I release more videos just like this showing you how to make money online. All right, that said, let's get straight into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is set up our conversion tracking goal inside of Google Ads. So at the top of your interface, you're gonna click on tools and settings and you're gonna click on conversions. And you're gonna click on this little plus sign here you're, we're gonna select website since that's most likely what you guys are using. And we're just gonna go from top to bottom filling in all these details as I will explain to you exactly what each of them mean. So the first thing here is the category. So you're gonna select from a dropdown. Now keep in mind, this is mainly for your reference, right? So if you wanna track a sale and you list it as a subscriber, as a contact, that's totally okay just that you will have to then know and keep this in mind for your own reference, right? So in our case, I have this sample landing page and the sample thank you page that I created using Unbounce, which is an amazing landing page builder of my choice, by the way. And what we wanna do is we wanna track people that signed up to our email list right over here. So we're gonna come back into Google and over here, we're just gonna select something that matches, right? Because we wanna make it easy for us to reference this later on and it's probably gonna be a sign up. So we can leave it at sign up. Now for the conversion name, we again, we wanna be very descriptive, as descriptive as we can, because later on, if we end up having many different conversions, let's say an upsell, a downsell, a purchase, you know, things like that, we wanna be able to tell which conversion got which actions, right? So in this case, we could say sign up to our, and I'm not even sure what this is, to our booth, or we can just say sign up, booth, something like that, all right? Again, this is all for your reference. Now for the value part here, the top option here says use the same value for each conversion. So let's suppose you're tracking sales. You would then enter how much is each sale worth to you. So you can enter your currency and then you would enter the exact amount. Now, sometimes your amount might differ. Let's say you have upsells, let's say you have downsells then you can enter maybe an average amount here, or you can use the help of your programmer to enter dynamic tokens. This is beyond the scope of this video, so I'm gonna leave it up to you and your developer to do, but what you would do is you would basically have to enter a specific code, and that will then enter a custom amount when you actually see your conversions. If you wanna play it simple though, and you do have a bunch of different upsells and downsells, you can enter just an average amount. Now you could also choose not to enter a value. So for example, if you're collecting emails, there's no real monetary value associated with somebody entering in their email right away. However, later on, as you do start getting more data, you will be able to do the math and work backwards and say on average, how much is each sign up worth to you? But if you wanna play it safe and you just wanna see conversions, you can just use this option and not enter anything at all. So that's that part. The next part here is the count. So if you're selling many different items, you can track every single sale for every one of those items from each individual person, or you can only track one. So if only one person, for example, signs up, he buys an upsell, he buys the main product, he buys a downsell, that will only count as one conversion. Whereas if you have one person buying multiple items and signing up to different lists, then that will count every single one of the conversions. So this is up to you how you wanna do it. The main thing is to actually see the conversions show up. So I like to keep it more accurate and go with one, but this is up to you, especially if you do have upsells and downsells, every option might be better so you can actually track the monetary value for each of those. So we're gonna scroll down. Next, we have these conversion windows. So let's start from the top. The click-through conversion window is the number of days that you set here that will count as a conversion after somebody clicks on your ad. So let's suppose somebody sees your ad, they click on it, 
and then they convert, they buy 31 days later. If you set this to 30 days, then that will not be considered a conversion. If you set it to, for example, 90 days, then it will because that 31st day is within the 90 day limit. So it's up to you how you want to set it. 90 is the maximum number of days, even if you choose to enter a custom amount. And generally the higher the number here, the bigger scale your product should be. So for example, if you're selling a little pencil, chances are that somebody forgot, completely forgot about your ad three months later. And so chances are that if they buy, it's not because they saw your ad. Whereas if it's something as big as a house or a car, people usually take much longer to do the research for products like this. So setting this number to be higher for higher ticket offers would make more sense because people normally take more time to research. So hopefully that makes sense. The next thing here is engaged view conversion window. So this is more so for video views. So if somebody has seen at least 10 seconds of your video and they make a conversion later on, how many days do you wanna give them? So if you give it three days, then if somebody has seen at least 10 seconds of your video and they buy or sign up two days later, that will be considered a conversion. Anything after than that will not be considered a conversion because chances are that that conversion happened to chance and is not attributed to the ad. So that's that. And then you have the view through conversion. So this basically counts the time between the actual impression of your ad, not somebody clicking, but somebody just seeing that your ad is there and them converting. So it may sometimes happen that somebody will just see your search ad, for example, and then they might buy 10 days later. So do you want that to be considered a conversion or not? So I think 30 days is kind of high, which is why you see here that the limit is 30 days for something like this. And the reason for that is because the user didn't really engage with your content, right? So it's kind of hard to gauge what the reason for that conversion was. So I think three days is a good number. And again, you can totally change this up depending on your own business. So that's for that. Uh, next we have conversions. So you will have two columns and I'm going to get into this after we actually set up the conversion. You will have the conversions column and then you will also have the all conversions column. So the all conversions column will show every single conversion that you set up here. So this process that we're doing, you can repeat this for other conversions like a purchase, a upsell, downsell, whatever it is you're tracking. All of those will be included in the all conversions column. However, the conversions column, note how it doesn't have the all in front of it, is kind of like your special conversions. So do you want this conversion to be quote unquote special, to be something that you want to specifically optimize for? So this will probably be something like sales, upsells, downsells, things like that. You probably want them to be the main conversions so that Google can then optimize for them and get you more of those customers. However, if the most important thing to you is leads, for example, as we're doing here, or signups, then you can make that the main conversion so that you can optimize and Google can help you find more people to sign up. If you only have an opt-in page like we have here in our example, then it really doesn't matter. And you should probably keep this check mark because, well, if that's the only conversion you have, then that should be the only special one. But that's generally what this is. Keep in mind, you will have the two columns, conversions and all conversions, and I will show you those before this video ends. Next, you have the attribution model. So by default, it is set to last click, which means that whatever the last click was, let's say you have many different ads, right? So in my previous videos, I showed you guys how to create a search ad, how to create a display ad, and how to create a YouTube ad. So there is a funnel journey, right, for the people. So they might see the search ad first, then they might see the display ad, and then maybe they'll go and see the YouTube ad, and then they'll buy. So this sets what ad do you want to have the sale attributed to it? So if you say last click, then the last ad that people saw, which in our case was the YouTube ad, that's the ad that's gonna get credit for that sale. So all the other ads, the search ad and the display ad that we had, they will not see any conversions, right? So you have the first click model, which means that if you have the search ad first, that's the ad that's gonna get all the credit. Then you have all these other options. Linear means that if you make a sale and people saw all three of your ads, that all three of them will get one third of the credit. So you will see 0.33 of a conversion in that column for every single one of those ads. You have time decay, which means that the first ad will still get some conversion credit, but not as much as the last one. And then you have position based, which means the first and the last will get the most credit. I believe it's something like the first ad and the last ad will get 40% of the credit and everything in between will get 20% split among them. 
And then you have the data driven. So this is generally the best option because Google will use their whole algorithm here to figure out which ad indeed contributed to the sale. However, I believe you need something like 100 conversions a month or something like that to be able to use this option, right? So you do need a lot of conversions to use this. And that's why it's not available right now. As you can see, it's grayed out and I can't click it. So we're just gonna leave it with the default, which is last click, and we're gonna keep going. So over here, I will deselect this option. Enhanced CPC means that whatever you set your bid, Google might sometimes charge you more for the clicks in order to actually get the clicks. So I don't want that to happen. I want my bid to stay exactly as it is. So I just turn it off. So I'm gonna go in and click create and continue. And now we'll be given a code, okay? So you can email the tag to your webmaster. And the whole point of this video is to show you how to do it yourself. So that's probably not something we wanna do. But if you do have a developer and you want them to double check your work, you can simply email them the instructions and they will be able to set it up. You can use Google Tag Manager if you have that as well. I do cover this in my Google Ads remarketing course. So if you wanna learn remarketing and how to use Google Tag Manager, I cover this stuff in very thorough detail. Make sure to check that out. But for the purpose of this video, the whole point of the video is to learn how to do it yourself. So we're gonna go with this option over here. So there are two codes you will have to add. The first code is this base code that you will have to add on every single page of your site. The second code is the event code. So this is the specific event we wanna track. So if we want to track people that sign up to our opt-in list, then we want to add that event code on the thank you page because the only way someone will get to the thank you page is by actually entering in their details. So it's basically like proof that they have signed up. So we're gonna come back here. So let's start off with this first code over here. I'm going to select it. I'm going to click copy and then I'm going to go into my landing page here, right? So this is my landing page backend. I'm gonna click on JavaScript and I'm gonna paste the code here. I'm gonna select head because that's what the Google Ads instructions are telling you to do. Put it in the head section of the site and we can name it. So we can say Google Ads conversion base code. Now you might be thinking, Ivan, I don't have Unbounce, what do I do? And my answer to that is exactly the same that I'm showing you here. So if you're using something else, let's say ClickFunnels, they will have an option for you to add your JavaScript. Now, if you are using WordPress, there are easier ways to do it. I believe they have certain plugins that you can use where you just need to add this code and everything else will be done for you. But in general, this is the process, regardless of what landing page builder or funnel builder you're using, you want to add this in the head section of your page and every page actually. So we also have to do it on the thank you page. So we're gonna open this thank you page and we're gonna add it here. And then I'm just gonna control C to copy that and control V to paste that right there. And this is gonna be our code on every page of our site, okay? And then we're gonna click done. We're gonna click done. Now we still need to do something here. I'll get into that, but that's the first step, right? So you wanna take this code and put it on every single page of your site. If you have the option to put it in one time and it'll add the code on every page on the website automatically, do that. But with Unbounce, I have to go in and manually add it on every page. So that's what we're doing here. Now, the next thing we have to do is take this event code and put it on the page that we wanna track. So like I said, in this case, we wanna track people that sign up, right? So we have to put this code on the thank you page. So I'm gonna go in and copy that, go to the thank you page, click add new JavaScript. Actually, we don't need to add new JavaScript. You can just put it here if you want. We'll click enter, and then we're just gonna paste that code here. And over here, we can say Google Ads conversion event code. We can say sign up. So this is totally up to you. Whatever I'm writing here is just for your reference. And then you can click on done. And that is it for the codes part, okay? So we can hit save here. We can hit save here again. We can hit publish, publish, publish. And now the code should be on your page. Click got it. And we'll click got it. And so now we can click next and that should be pretty much it. So we can click done. And now it's gonna take some time for Google to verify. Generally, if you're running traffic through this campaign with these pages, then this status should change from unverified very quickly. Now, if you want to make sure that you added the code correctly, what you could do is download a Chrome extension called Tag Assistant by Google. So say Tag Assistant Google. And just click on this first option here. So it's gonna be called Tag Assistant Legacy by Google. Click on Add to Chrome. We're gonna add extension. I actually forgot to add this. I, I wanted to add it and I completely forgot. So uh, now you get to know how to actually find it. And now it should be over here. So let me add it, let me pin it here. 
it's it's right there as you can see, right? So what we're gonna do is let's go back, let's go back and let's actually open these pages and check out both of them and see if they work. So we're gonna open this page, that's our landing page, and then we're gonna open the thank you page, okay? So we have our landing page here. So what we're gonna do is click on this extension now. We're gonna click done. We're gonna click enable, and then we're gonna refresh the page. And you should see green here. Um, so here there's two, and then here you see the little green tag, and there are two tags, right? So the one tag is the global site tag, and by default, it adds the remarketing tag as well. But this is the tag that you want. So you just wanna make sure that the numbers are the same. So it ends in 4214. Let's see if it ends in 4214, or actually we can come back here. You can also edit this um, by clicking on it. And if you click on the tag setup, you should be able to see it over here. Yeah, so it's 4214, right? And then if we're here, we can also take a look, yeah. So that just confirms that it's our ID. You do wanna check the ID if you are checking it in the first place, just because sometimes other people might have their codes on different pages, right? And so you wanna make sure that yours is the code that's there. So that's the landing page. Now for the thank you page, we should have a little bit more because we also have the event code, right? So we're gonna enable that, we're gonna refresh the page, and then see there, you might not see, there's a tiny little three there. So if you click here, you have the Google site tag and then you have the conversion tracking and this is the specific event, right? And so this is green. So that means everything is working properly. Everything is working correctly. Like I said, the remarketing tag is there by default, but congratulations, that's green. So that means everything is set up correctly. If you don't see as many tags or they're not green, then you will be able to click on them and figure out what's wrong. And you should also be able to contact Google Ads support and they should be able to help you figure out what's wrong. But if you followed my steps exactly to the T, you should have no issues and this should all be correct. All right, so that is it for this part. One more thing, let me quickly show you where to actually find these conversions. So if we go back into your account, we go to campaigns here. So I have the conversions tab here open by default, but if you click on, sorry, conversions column, um, you can click on modify columns here and then you go to conversions and then here you have the conversions, right? And then here you have all conversions. So you can select all conversions if you want to see every single conversion. And then you can go in and drag it maybe, where's our conversions? Conversions are there. Maybe we wanna put them together, up to you how you wanna do it. And then you can click on apply. You can also save the column set if you want. So again, if I click modify over here, you can save it and you can give it a name, kind of like the names I have here, right? Over here, I have a custom name. And then you can also do the same for other stuff. Like if you have keywords here and you wanna see conversions for Keywords, you would also go to columns. You would maybe edit this one. That was my default column that I created. Go to conversions and then boom, you'd select all conversions. But that's kind of the point, right? Is to have conversions separately so that Google will be able to feed data based on these conversions. These are the main ones. All conversions might be a mess because if you have leads, if you have upsells, if you have downsells, if you have different options of signing up, if you have maybe a phone number people can call, this can get messy because you'll see a ton of different conversions together and you won't be able to really know what's what. But if you wanna do that, totally up to you. At least now you know exactly how to do it and where to go to actually see the conversions. So that is it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed how I teach, if you enjoyed this content, definitely take a look at my other videos at youtube.com slash Yvonne Mana. I have 430 plus videos or so at this point of completely free content of teaching you how to make money online, teaching you how to use certain platforms, BMob, which is a tracking tool, System.io review, you know, reasons why you're not getting sales, reasons why you're not getting impressions, clicks, things like that. I cover everything in very thorough detail, guys. Definitely take a look. I also give you a free 55-page affiliate marketing guide at youngmana.com. Take a look as well, teaches you everything about affiliate marketing and how you can get started today. So take a look, lots and lots and lots of free content. I hope you found this video valuable. I will see you in the next video.